if you're a customer of something and then you go into sales, now you're selling from a place of being a customer and experiencing that way. It's not a do as I say, not as I do. This is truly a do as I say, because I was in your shoes or something similar. I know what it's like. I know what you're going through. I know what you're trying to achieve. I've done that. Here's where I am. And this is where you could be as well. The first thing is for you to be aware and be focused on what it is that you want to sell. Now, here's the tough thing. And this is what's interesting. When I have started working with universities, colleges that have sales related programs, whether they have a class about professional sales or they have full on degree programs, one of the things I'm hearing constantly is that somebody 18, 19, 20 years old in college, they didn't even realize that sales is a career and that B2B sales is a thing, right? So most people at that age, I can speak for myself, you think sales is furniture, cars, cell phones, jewelry, things like that. You don't realize there's a whole world of people selling to other companies what it is that they're going to need as well, software, uh, copiers, things like that. And so you might not know everything that's out there, but the big thing is, is what do you want to sell? What type of things do you want to sell? What kind of product or service would you be excited by and believe in? A lot of times what happens is people are a customer of something and then they realize, hey, that is really exciting. I love it from a customer perspective. And then they go into selling that. So again, that could be cars, uh, it could be copy machines, whatever it is that excites you, but something where you're a customer. And there's a lot of value, and I'll tell you as a complete side note, is that if you're a customer of something and then you go into sales, now you're selling from a place of being a customer and experiencing that way. It's not a do as I say, not as I do. This is truly a do as I say, because I was in your shoes or something similar. I know what it's like. I know what you're going through. I know what you're trying to achieve. I've done that. Here's where I am. And this is where you could be as well. And so that's always powerful, way more powerful when you're selling something that you believe in and that you have direct experience with. Now, sometimes that's tough. Sometimes it's challenging to be a customer of something depending on what you deal with. Like for example, at one period in my, uh, in my life, uh, early on when I was in sales, if you will, I didn't realize it was sales at the time, so that's why I say in quotes, um, I was helping people who are in foreclosure. Now, I was not my own customer. Uh, I was not in foreclosure. I had not been in foreclosure. Uh, I wasn't in need of a short sale. And so I was helping other people from a place of wanting to help other people, but not from a place of being a customer. Now, I will say that there's some people out there who get into that kind of business and they've been there and they just want to help other people not get there as well or get out of that situation. That is always more powerful because again a first party testimonial of i've been there i'm going to help you is way different than a third party testimonial which is i helped bob bob was there now bob is here right that's still good but not as powerful so key is first find what you believe in what is it that you believe in what excites you what could you talk about all the time and not in a pushy sales way where like you're in the line at the grocery store and you're trying to sell every person that has a pulse because you're just so excited, right? Sometimes that's valuable. It depends on what you're selling, but that's not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to what can you talk about day in and day out? What are you excited by? What do you think is fascinating and fun and is valuable, right? What is valuable to the world or to that segment that you see as valuable and you know is valuable? Again, this is where if you have experiences in life, it really plays into sales because as you can say, like I've been at companies where we had this issue and then I saw that we got this thing and then that really helped. And now you go into selling that thing, whether it's marketing automation or consulting or sales enablement tools or whatever that looks like, because you've seen it and you've been near it, uh, that always helps. So that's the first thing. That's the one of the best pieces of advice is like, what excites you uh, and what do you believe in? Again, keeping in mind, there's a ton of stuff. There's infinite number of things to sell out there. And so you might not know. So some of it might be, okay, what category, what excites you in a category? And then finding some specific stuff that you just didn't know um, because there's so many things out there. 
Second thing to consider and think about when you're looking at an ideal sales role and an ideal sales job at a company, uh, again, this is whether you're in one now and you're looking to change companies, maybe something doesn't feel right, or um, you might be validating whether you're in the right fit or not, and this might apply to you, or you're looking at getting into sales and you're thinking, all right, how do I know if this is going to be the right fit? The second one here is looking at what kind of a conversational relationship person are you? Now, here's what I mean by this is there are generally two types of sales cycles. There's short sales cycles and then there's long sales cycles. What is a short sales cycle? Well, a short sales cycle is when you walk into, uh, let's say Best Buy, and you need to buy a new TV, and you're on a mission, you generally know what you're looking for, you walk in, somebody helps you make the best decision for what your needs are, uh, and then you walk out with a TV, right? And that's it, right? That's a really short sales cycle. That's a one visit sales cycle, one visit close. Um, in telephone sales, which is where I work a lot, there's the one call close, which is let's say somebody needs help with a credit card or needs help or wants to sign up for insurance and they're ready to go it's done one phone call however long that takes could be 20 minutes could be an hour but it's done right and you may never talk to that person again you may never talk to that prospective client ever again and that's okay and then you're moving on all right. The other side is more of a long sales cycle, longer sales cycle. And then there's enterprise sales, which is in, in a different category, right? So let's say longer sales is more than a one call close. That might be a few weeks. It might be a few months where you talk to somebody once and you're getting an idea if they're interested or if it's even a good fit, then you're scheduling another follow-up call. And then you're maybe going through a demo or some kind of discussion about what options are available. They've got to talk about it with others. They've got to think about it, especially in a B2B stand, uh, uh, standpoint. And then there's a decision needs to be made and then there's budgeting and that could go on for a while. Sometimes that happens really quick. Some longer sales cycles could be also really quick where it's a matter of hours or days or weeks when somebody's really ready it's really a good fit and they know what they want other times it could take months and months and months it could take years that depends but it's something where the expectation isn't a one call close and again not just b2b sometimes b2c as well if somebody's looking at help getting um you know assistance with their finance their finances right so they're looking at getting set up with a financial planner that's going to be a longer term sales cycle because it's like hey we got to meet and then we got to look through the finances and then we got to put together a plan and does this make sense and do you want to hire our company or myself right so there's several stages versus one then there's enterprise enterprise is when you're looking at i'm going to sell this expensive package of whatever it is, right? It could be copiers, it could be software to a large company. This could take six to 18 months. It's going to have, it could be, you know, $100,000. It could be $10 million is the sales price. Um, but it's going to be take a long time. There's a lot that's going to happen. It's disrupting a lot of things by, you know, making this decision to buy because there's either something in place that needs to be removed and replaced, or this is something brand new. And then the infrastructure has to be built around it. A whole bunch of people have to agree to the cost and a lot of people have to be involved with the implementation so that it gets uh, done successfully even before it starts and those take a long time.